Shanks is an Elbaf. Hello One Piece enthusiasts, I'm the One Piece nerd, and today let's talk about One Piece chapter 1076. Well, few things to cover this time around. Not only a good island, we get stuff outside. We're gonna start off with what's outside. Shanks vs. Kid is about to happen. Well, didn't say I didn't expect this, my theory came true. I think everyone, almost everyone predicted how this would go. We've been talking about how Shanks is connected to Elba of the community as a whole. has been talking for years and years about how it connects back to North, Norse mythology and how Shanks is somehow related to Elbaf, not either, not directly, but in one way, shape, or form. Loads of things to go about. Before we move on, make sure to like and subscribe. It helps the channel out a lot. Now that you have, let's begin. Well, with theories being confirmed left and right this time around, well, Kid vs. Shanks is about to happen. I think I also talked about this in my previous video. I'm going to link it down below. Talked about how Elbaf is going to be the next place of war. And, well, aside from that, we're going to get into Kid. This time we know that Kid, the first time he faced off against Shanks, he didn't technically fight off against Shanks. He fought off against one of either Shanks' officers or one of his allies. And he said he was completely underhanded, which probably means that either he didn't have his crew or even if he did, he probably didn't have, you know, enough of them. Which, I don't know how this could go. Because if he says that, you know, the opponent had a lot of fleet, but he didn't, that doesn't really make much sense because that's supposed to happen. If the enemy outnumbers you, I think that's fair. But if you, if you are underhanded because of certain, certain circumstances, fair point, I get it. Well, this time he's gonna have to face off against Shanks. And, well, no avoiding this time. And we do know... That yeah, Shanks is now uh, Shanks is allied with Elbaf. It's been predicted before, and we can go into it why. But that's not my thing for this time around. This time around, let's just talk about you know potentials. And of course, we get to see Dory and Broggy. Finally, at long last, we get to see Dory and Broggy. It's been so long. It's been so, 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 so long we got to see them. I really, really wanted to see them sooner or later. And especially they're reuniting with the Straw Hats. And of course we knew the Straw Hats were going to go to Elbaf. When now they're going to see them beforehand. And how they're allied with Shanks. It's going to be insane. It's actually going to be insane. Well, one thing to make clear is that Shanks doesn't constantly go to Elbaf. The Giants are his friends. And Dorian Broggy specifically, he said, I'm glad to know some of my friends are alive, which either probably includes Saw as well. But I, I think he specifically meant Dorian Broggy, but that also makes very little sense. Because either when he was going around with Roger, that's when he came up came across Dorian Broggy, and that's how they became friends. Or I don't know, you could put it in any way, shape, or form. I have no idea. But either way. The last thing I will touch upon for this review is that Shanks needs the rubbing from Kid. Well, what do I think? Mm, yeah, Shanks is definitely going after the One Piece. If he's here in Elbaf, and Shanks is willing to take the rubbing from Kid, I feel like, yeah, Shanks is definitely... Elbaf definitely has the last Poneglyph, and, well, Kid... Yeah. It makes sense as to why Kid would be there. Like, of course, plot Oda wants Kid to face off against Shanks. And Shanks needs to somehow get the upper hand over all the other Yonkos. Trying to get over One Piece. So, that's all something. We can move on. We can move on to the, day, the beginning of the chapter. This time we got no cover page. But last time we saw the Vegapunk made the Gorosei. And we saw the Gorosei looked exactly the same in this. It's probably 50, 60 years ago. Not 60 years ago, but 30, 40 years ago. And it hinted at the Goro saving immortal. But that's for another video. For this time around, no cover page. We started the chapter where we left off. Luchi and Kaku, they won their handcuffs removed. They want to fight, fight off against Seraphims. And well, we could go all over the place with how the conversations went. And of course, Luffy being the kind of naive guy he is, 
believes everything that Kaku says. And of course, Luchi being the hot-headed guy he is, although he's an assassin, he just spills the bean over everything. Shaka asks what was their goal. Their goal was to eliminate the seven Megapunks. And, well, Luffy taunts him and Luffy, and Luffy taunts him by saying that, you know, I'm not going to let you have to lay a hand on my friends. He's like, after I beat you, I'm, have, I'm exactly going to lay a hand on your friends and whatever. Like, in fact, forget your friends. I'm here to beat you up. Or something along that line. I like that exchange. I didn't find it that hilarious, but yes, it's comedy. Only reason I didn't find it hilarious is because I got spoiled in this, you know, Shanks appearing in the chapter. I was more excited for that than this. But what happens at the end of the day is that, yeah, they do get their handcuffs removed. Which I'm gonna say I'm not a fan of, but you really didn't have much of a choice. I wanted to see the Straw Hats take down the Seraphim by themselves to see that they're, com they're competent enough to not be scared off by them. Now they're going to help. I'm like, alright, yeah, they're probably going to win. They're probably going to end up winning regardless. What's more interesting, though, is how the Mihawk Seraphim as Hawk has Mr. Wan's fruit. Of course, Zoro being Zoro, having faced off all the swordsmen in the groups in like the fights and the battles against enemies. Mr. One, he fought off against Mr. One. Mr. One was in Impel Down. And of course, Vegapunk would use that opportunity to make, to have Mihawk have multiple swords. Of course, being the sword master he is with one sword, give him more blades. Why not? And I think that is fitting. I really, really want to. At this point, though, I am not going to speculate on the other three Seraphim and their Devil Fruits because. I don't even know if they exist. We've seen the four. The four of the Devil's Fruits got revealed. Well, and as for the last three, I don't even know if the last three exist at this point. Even if they do, probably sure Doflamingo. I'm not sure what Doflamingo has though. But it's fun to speculate. I'll get back to that in a bit. Maybe a dedicated video for that. But aside from that, uh, it's very interesting. We get to see that. And the fights just started. I thought Luffy would directly go into Gear 5. But remember, I think Luffy already exhausted his Gear 5. He probably doesn't want him to get into it again. Gear 4 is fine. We see Luchi again on his uh, hybrid form. Interesting. And Zoro Kaku team up. Interesting enough as well. Well, that's it for that. I'm waiting for to see how many twists we can get from there. I'm not expecting much. But the last thing I want to touch up on the chapter, which I feel like is another most interesting point of the chapter, is again, Shaka. Shaka being the guy he is, I've, I've always been doubting him. And this time around, he's doing like, imagine this. You've got two Seraphims. You've got Luffy, Zoro, Kaku, and Luchi facing off against two of the Seraphim. What do you have to be worried about? Go fix the, fix the lava, lava sphere and, you know, and... Get the Straw Hats out of here. Solve the issue. And we finally get to see where Vegapunk is. Vegapunk is with the CP5 and CP80 guys that came here f to get intel. And the Stella body itself is there. He got captured with his own prisoners. And we got to know this time around that he wasn't involved with the prisoners being captured he had no idea of this and so there's definitely a traitor if anyone says otherwise that's bullshit with that being said vegapunk also touched on the fact that you know how the government got to know about uh how the government got to know about the uh poneglyph research that's been going on and all that like he's also very interested to know who who led who led that you know out and Shaka, as I was saying, m did nothing to solve the current issues at hand. The more I'm reading through Egghead Island, the more I'm like, okay, he's the one. He's definitely the one. The mo and remember, I'm gonna say this again. Shaka being the only person among the f seven Vegapunks to mention about the Void Century, about the Poneglyph, and about Ohara. If he's not the one who's getting in, who's getting information leaked to the world government, I don't know who it is. 
that's it for the chapter. If you guys enjoyed, make sure to like and subscribe. Have a great day and peace.